growth body composition and cardiovascular nutrition risk, which is an interesting thing. They put that in there. A five to 10 year old children consuming vegetarian, vegan, and omnivore diets. Uh, they say vegan diets are associated with a healthier cardiovascular risk profile. This is such a catch-all wastebasket thing these days. It just means they had lower cholesterol, which I would argue is a very bad thing. Uh, they weren't able to substantiate any sort of proper hormonal levels, but they had an increased risk of nutritional deficiencies and uh, lower bone mineral density and height. So, oh no, but it's okay. They have lower LDL. That's a good thing. We all know that lower LDL is good. Um, interestingly, we should know vegetarians showed a less pronounced nutritional deficiencies, uh, but unexpectedly a less favorable cardiovascular, cardiovascular, uh, cardiometabolic, they say risk profile. Yeah. That's because when you give kids eggs and milk, they actually have a healthy amount of LDL cholesterol in their body, uh, a very critical thing for infant and human development. So, um, what are your thoughts on this study? I, this is a Polish cross-sectional study, uh, there were 63 vegetarian, 52 vegan, and 72 matched omnivores. And it's it's interesting how they just gloss over all the bad things. Yeah, again, this um, when discussing this with vegan doctors, they they debunk this study because a lot of the the, the vegans were not supplementing with uh, B12. I think it was one third of them or something like that, um, and uh, not with vitamin D either. And so they said that this is not a healthy vegan population. It's an unhealthy vegan population. And that is why the results are skewed the, the way that they are because they weren't supplementing properly. And, 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 but that just, you know, my argument to that was, well, you know, if, if, if we're advising human beings on diets, shouldn't we take into account, you know, human behavior, like forgetfulness or just laziness and these things that, are inherent in human beings and and uh, account for those things when recommending uh, a diet to humans um like you know if, if we need so many supplements like it's 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 like at, at someone is going to forget <laughs> to give the right dosage the right type of b12 and they're going to give methylcobalamin instead of cyanocobalamin and, and make all kinds of mistakes like there's a lot of mistakes that can go wrong um and so even though a lot of them forgot to give the right supplementation. The, it, it still showcases that um, it's not optimal um, and it's, it, it, it's problematic and dangerous as well. Um, so, Yeah, I would say clearly not optimal. Vegans had lower fat indices in all regions. Uh, that's bad. <laughs> that, that's the wasting. Uh, both vegans and vegetarians had lower bone mineral density, bone mineral content. Vegans were shorter, had lower total LDL um, and lower HDL. Um, they had lower HSCRP, which is interesting, but they had lower protein, lower iron status, lower serum B12, and lower 25-hydroxy vitamin D without mm -hmm. supplementation. And they had higher homocysteine and mean corpuscular volume. Homocysteine is an indication of B12 and or folate and or riboflavin deficiency with higher being worse. And uh, a higher mean corpuscular volume would indicate either folate or uh, B12 deficiency. So uh, there's you know, vitamin B12 deficiency, iron deficiency, anemia, low ferritin, which is an indicative of low iron stores and low HDL were more prevalent in vegans uh, who also had the lowest prevalence of quote unquote high LDL. So it's just, this doesn't look good for vegans. Uh, I don't understand how vegans also ignore all of the evolutionary and anthropologic context here. Do we think our ancestors were really doing this? Is, are, we, are we really so sure? Are we really believe that we can break from what our ancestors have been doing for so long. You know, I went and visited the Hadza last year. They didn't give their kids any supplements and they generally grow up pretty darn hale and hearty. Uh, I think that it's clear that an evolutionarily appropriate, species appropriate diet for humans should be intuitive and easy. And I love that kids really give us indication of this. What do your kids prefer to eat? Meat, um, sometimes organs, often fat and fruit. It's so simple. Uh, and I wanna just keep going down this rabbit hole a little bit and talk about yet just a single one of the nutrients that I've never seen mentioned in any one of these vegan studies. Let's talk about choline. Uh, this is an article called Choline, the Underconsumed and Underappreciated Essential Nutrient. And this is in humans, but it's incredible. There, where is the choline on a vegan diet? And any of these studies, does Cleveland Clinic or WebMD say, you know, actually your vegan kids are going to be low in choline. Vegetarian kids might not be if they're getting enough eggs and milk, but a, a vegan child is definitely going to be low in choline. Well, 
Why do you need choline? Well, to make every single cell membrane in your body, neurons, brain, acetylcholine, neurotransmitters. Uh, it's pretty crazy stuff. And here we, you know, see this um, just talked about very clearly for um, even adults and kids, but there's never, is there any discussion about choline in the vegan community? Um, there has been in the past when uh, proponents of the paleo or ketogenic diet talk about it and talk about how vegan diets don't have choline. And it's generally debunked by um, them saying that soy and cauliflower have choline. So those two foods. Soy and cauliflower? <laughs> yeah. Apparently those two foods are the, are the answer to, to that question. So you um, have to feed your kids tons of cauliflower every day and tons of choline every day. <laughs> Soy, soy, soy based, <laughs> soy based choline, which yeah. is clearly not as bioavailable as an animal based form of choline. Uh, okay. So I think that we can, I don't have that study pulled up right now, but we can pause the podcast and pull it up. But there's, um, it's, it's pretty clear that vegans are low in choline, even with all of the, uh, even with as much of the, um, I'm sure they're uh, getting some soy. Yeah. Yeah. Even with cauliflower and soy smoothies all day long, they, they don't seem to get enough uh, choline in their diets. So this one, I think, is the one that I wanted to pull up. This one. Usual choline intakes are associated with egg and protein food consumption in the United States. So this study um, from July 2017 found that choline, an essential nutrient for critical roles in several biological processes, including neuronal development, psych cell signaling, nerve impulse transmission, lipid transport, and metabolism. Uh, they found that protein food, meat, poultry, and seafood consumption increased choline consumption and uh, adults 19 plus who consumed eggs more likely to meet their gender and life stage uh, adequate intakes as compared to non-consumers. But basically if people didn't consume eggs or protein in this observational study, um, there were uh, substantial uh, deficiencies in choline, which is a critical nutrient for humans. So I think it's pretty sketchy 